Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to ML526DE, or as we call it uh, in the English language, Leading Congregational Worship. Um, this is an online class that is being taught as a part of uh, the J-Term offerings at Bethel Seminary, and um, I'm your instructor. My name is Seth Heinrichs, and um, I'm really excited to be joining you for this class and uh, in about this format of teaching it. Um, and uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about my online experience in just a minute. Um, I just want to start off giving you a little bit of information uh, about myself, both personally and uh, academically, and also as it pertains to this class, um, about myself as a worshiper. Um, as I said, my name is uh, Seth Heinrichs. Um, this is my first class that I've taught as a part of the uh, Bethel Seminary program, but I really am excited to be with you guys. Um, I'll give you a little bit of my background and my story as a worshiper, just so you have some feel uh, for where I'm coming from with regards to my background in this class. And um, also, so that, you know, you kind of know, maybe in your own experience, um, you know, different pieces that I can relate to or, uh, you know, maybe that resonate with you as well. Um, I've had a wide and varied experience when it comes to Christian worship uh, in the church. I grew up in Hanover, New Hampshire, which is, uh, most people know uh, that town as the campus of Dartmouth College. Um, but that's where I grew up. And I grew up in a small Baptist church on an Ivy League campus, uh, which means that it was a very small church. There were not a lot of people that attended Baptist churches uh, on Ivy League campuses back in that day. Um, it, it was not uh, what you might think of as a Baptist church, either from down south in the country or uh, maybe even you know here in the Midwest, uh, where I am in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, it had a little bit more of a liturgical feel in nature. Our pastor had a Lutheran background, and uh, he brought that with him into his experience uh, as a Baptist. So that's what I grew up with when, when I was really young. Uh, my father was a hospital chaplain, though, uh, which meant that a lot of my exposure to Christian worship wasn't just in uh, the First Baptist Church, uh, Hanover Center, and Aetna, uh, New Hampshire, but it was also in the hospital, uh, and it had a real ecumenical flavor as a result of it. Um, I, I had different kinds of exposures to my dad's colleagues' worship services, which were Lutheran or Catholic or just kind of ecumenical uh, in their nature, so had a kind of wide variety of experiences there. Um, but then in the early 90s, I came to Bethel College and uh, traveled from New Hampshire all the way out to the Midwest, uh, to Minneapolis, St. Paul, where I am now, and uh, discovered a, a lot of new forms of music and style and all kinds of stuff that had yet to really make their way to the East Coast. Um, and it was crazy to me, uh, the, the, all the different ways that people were worshiping and people were actually raising their hands in worship. And oh my gosh, what does the world come to? Jesus must be coming back soon. I mean, it was it was kind of a, an experience that blew my mind, but it just kind of broadened my, my sense of what's possible in worship. Um, and I was actually married at Willow Creek Community Church in South Barrington, Illinois. So went from, you know, this little church in Hanover, New Hampshire, this little Baptist church where my sister and I really were the youth group, um, all the way to getting married at one of the most, uh, one of the largest, uh, biggest churches in the country, and uh, there's kind of a story behind that, but, you know, had to go to worship services there as a result, and just had all kinds of experiences between small Baptist church to large mega church in the suburbs, and everything in between um, as I was going through college and seminary. So it was kind of a, a wide uh, range of, uh, of experiences. Um, Fast forwarding with you just a little bit, after college, I did go to seminary, uh, became a senior pastor at age 26, and uh, over the course of the next 14 years, I would go on to pastor two different churches. The first church was a 120-year-old BGC, or Converge Worldwide Church, with a very proud history. Uh, it was in a small town, and um, these folks were people who lived together, you know, grew up together, ma got married together, raised their kids together, worked their farms together. Uh, they just did life. Everything was all together and reached their community together. Um, 
And so uh, it was a 120-year-old church, very proud history, very traditional in its worship style, and they were looking to make some changes. So they brought in a, a 26-year-old senior pastor. Um, <laughs> why people think that bringing in a young pastor to overhaul a church is a good idea, uh, I will never really know. But that's, uh, that's a whole other story in and of itself. But um, over the course of the, the time that I was there, we really walked through um, uh, changing the face and the style and the, the elements of worship in the church. Uh, we looked to make some changes. We were able to navigate the, those changes successfully, which is a very difficult um, it's a very difficult ministry to do, to take a church that worships with one style and move them to a different style. Uh, it, it's very difficult to do, especially a 120-year-old church that's aging and dying. Uh, but we took uh, about five or six years and did that and, and uh, saw some good results uh, along the way. And, um, you know, certainly there were compromises and, and uh, battles and worship wars and all kinds of stuff along the way. We'll talk about that in this course. Um, but at the same time, it gave me a, an incredible amount of experience not just going back to my own roots with some traditional worship, and that's where this church was, but in sort of leading through uh, worship experiences and trying to take a church and move them from one style to another. Um, as I said, difficult ministry to do, but, uh, but it can be done. The second church that I pastored uh, was a church plant. So went from a 120-year-old church at really the end of its life cycle all the way to uh, a brand new church that had just been born, I and, and I was the founding pastor. Uh, it was in a rural community, and so it's at the, at the other end of the life spectrum or, or life cycle. And as you can imagine, a very different kind of worship style. So my, my first church was 120 years old and sang its three hymns every Sunday and had its uh, certain prayer times at different points of the service and um, you know, uh, we used to have the old pastoral prayer where uh, members of the congregation are calling out different things they want prayed for, and that's always kind of a touchy deal. Uh, but then went all the way to my second church where, you know, it was as church planty as church plants get, uh, with a full band leading worship, a worship leader, uh, lights, sound, technology, arts, video, I mean, you name it. And that's what we were doing, even in rural America. Um, and that's getting easier and easier to do in rural America, by the way. We're also going to talk about that in this class. Um, but so went from one end of the spectrum all the way to the other. Um, and, uh, you know, from dying to birth, from traditional to the most contemporary thing that you can imagine. I don't even like using the word contemporary because I, I, think, that's a, I think that's a word that's um, kind of run its course. Uh, in in worship circles, but those were the two churches that I planted uh, in their style, and, and they couldn't be more different from each other. Um, I've led worship in hospitals. I've led worship in nursing homes. I've led worship in contemporary and traditional services uh, in churches. I have preached to crowds that have ranged from 15 people to 1,500 people at a time. And uh, I, I've, as a result, I've just had a wide range of experiences when it comes to Christian worship as a result. Um, and it's, it's been kind of a wild ride, but it's, it's one that uh, has been sort of my journey um, as a worshiper. And that's the background that I bring to this class, is uh, someone who has experienced an awful lot of different kinds of Christian worship, different styles, different elements of worship, different traditions, um, city, country, rural, urban, church plant, traditional uh, church with a big, proud history. I I've had all these different experiences, and I'm hoping to share a little bit of what I've learned with you along the way in this class. And, and uh, for me, that's kind of a fun thing to do, and I hope that you're going to enjoy it as well. There's a picture of me uh, smiling back at you there. Uh, give you a little bit about me um, uh, on an academic level. Uh, in 1996, I earned an in a BA in English Literature from Bethel College, now Bethel University. Uh, I graduated from Bethel Seminary with a Master of Divinity in the year 2000. Uh, and then in 2013, I was awarded a degree in Advanced Christian Leadership 
from Fuller Theological Seminary and um, uh, really loved my academic journey. Uh, and um, I'm currently back at Bethel these days uh, pursuing a Master's of Education. Um, and uh, so that's been kind of a fun deal as well. Unexpected. It's not something I expected I'd be doing in my life, but um, my academic journey is continuing. And I love learning. It's something that uh, is a big part of who I am. But uh, I've loved my time at Bethel, uh, loved my time at Fuller, and um, couldn't be more grateful for my academic experiences. Um, on a personal level, I'll give you a few things about me. Uh, I love basketball. Uh, my favorite teams are the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Boston Celtics. In fact, a little known uh, fact about me is that I'm a season ticket holder of the Minnesota Timberwolves. So that's just kind of a fun deal. Um, I'm a musical schizophrenic. Uh, I, at any given point in time, you're likely to find my Sirius XM radio station dialed into anything from classical to jazz to 40s music to 80s hair bands and metal. So... Uh, it just depends on what mood I'm in and what I'm doing, but I'm a musical schizophrenic, and by the way, I will also tell you that being a musical schizophrenic will serve you well as you plan worship services. Um, this is something that is a good thing, uh, to have a wide degree of uh, background and experience and, and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, I love music. I, I, I play a little bit um, in terms of piano and a couple of instruments and sing, and so... Uh, uh, I'm just a huge music fan, but I'm all over the map there. Um, I'm a photographer and a teacher. Um, I, I do a lot of portrait photography and uh, actually own my own studio. So um, I, I do a lot of photography. It's something I've done all my life, uh, and, uh, and I really enjoy it. And I'm also a teacher, um, but that's just kind of uh, a part of what I do and who I am these days. Um, I love movies, I love coffee, I love reading, I love spending time with my family, I love really good conversations, good food, and I also love all things Shakespeare. So, uh, if you're looking for last minute, late Christmas gifts, uh, <laughs> that would, you know, anything Shakespeare uh, works for me. Truthfully, what I really love is I enjoy people's stories. Um, whether it's as a photographer, as a pastor, as a teacher, I love people's stories and learning about where God has been in people's lives, learning about God from people's stories um, and sharing those stories with other people as well. Uh, so uh, th that's just kind of a big piece of who I am. Uh, it goes back to my English literature roots, I know, but um, I, I love hearing people's stories of not just where they've encountered God, but what they've been through and uh, what their life story has been and uh, how people have made the decisions that they have, all that kind of stuff. It, it's just, uh, I, I love uh, hearing about people's lives that way. Um, I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about giving you kind of some orientation to the class here, giving you sort of a, uh, a big picture. And that's really what I want to do with you uh, as I'm recording this tonight. I, I want to make sure that you guys get a bird's eye view of what the next month uh, is going to be like uh, in this class. Uh, let me say just a little bit as we begin about online learning, okay? Because there's just a few things that need to be said. The first is that online learning is amazing, it's incredible, it's wonderful, it's a blessing when it's done right, okay? Um, but when it's done wrong, it can be the biggest curse, the biggest pain, the biggest uh, thorn in your side you can possibly imagine. Um, I just recently had an experience last summer with online learning as a student that was a horrible experience, just awful. Um, the professor very rarely explained anything. There was no orientation to anything. I was sort of left to figure things out for myself, and for my learning style, that just doesn't work. So what I want to make sure to do is let you know that there really is a real person on the other side of this computer and my goal is to communicate well with you and be a resource to you throughout this class and really beyond. I mean, if you have questions beyond this class about designing worship services or transitioning uh, a church or leading a church through worship changes, the worship wars, uh, you know, all of that kind of stuff. If you have questions, I'd love to continue our relationship after this class. I just want you to know that I really am a real person. You really can communicate with me. Um, sometimes it sort of seems like in an online environment 
we're all just uh, you know tied into our computers and we press buttons and things magically happen. Um, and to a certain extent, that's true and it's incredible. But um, there is a human aspect of this as well that I want to make sure that we we experience as much as we can. And um, so I just want to say that at, at the outset, I'm very sensitive to the fact that online education can be a challenge. And I want to make this as good of an experience for you um, as I possibly can. Let me say a few words about the logistics and flow of our class um, and how this class is going to work. Okay. I've tried to structure it in such a way that each week is going to have the same schedule or flow to it to try to keep things very simple and understandable. Um, you know, like the man said, it's J term, so we're not here for a long time. We're here for a good time. And I think the only way that's really going to happen is if, uh, is if we can kind of keep some consistency and simplicity to our weeks and keep them understandable for you, keep them predictable. So here's the way our, our weeks are going to flow. On Tuesdays today, I will upload a 15 to 30 minute online lecture. And um, we'll talk about that more in just a minute, but uh, that's going to be on Tuesdays. My expectation is that you will watch that, okay? That you will uh, take part in that, you will experience that. Wednesdays, you will have reading responses due in the forum that is um, online in Moodle. Um, please note that there is no reading due this week. I'll say it again later in the presentation, but there is no reading due this week. So, but generally speaking, Tuesdays, we've got the lecture uploaded. Wednesdays, our reading responses are going to be due. Thursdays, um, your lecture response is going to be due in the forum. And we'll talk about what that is in just a second. But basically, the lecture response is just you posting a question or a comment about the, uh, the lecture or the topic discussed that week. Just basically showing me and the rest of your classmates that, yes, I did indeed listen to it. And, uh, and, and was processing the information as we went on. So that's Thursdays. And then Fridays, um, I want you to go back into the forum for your reading responses, and I want you to respond to two classmates uh, in the forum. And if you're noticing a theme here, it's in the forum, okay? Reading responses in the forum. Reading interaction in the forum. Lecture responses due in the forum. Why? Because I really do want you guys, to the extent that we can, interacting with each other. Um, so when I go to look for your assignments due or see who's participating and who's not, that's where I'm going to be headed, is to the forums, and that's where I hope to do some interacting with you um, as well. Throughout the rest of the week, my expectation is that you're going to be reading and working on your final assignment. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Many of you have already been emailing me your questions uh, regarding that. And that's great. That's awesome. I'm glad to take them. Uh, and I will respond individually. But uh, uh, that's just kind of the flow of our week here. So Tuesday's lecture. Wednesday's reading responses are due. Thursday's lecture responses are due. Friday's your reading interaction with two of your classmates is due. And the rest of the week, you're just reading and working on your final assignment. I don't expect that these assignments, um, Tuesdays through uh, really the rest of the week, I don't expect that they're going to take up a lot of your day. And my hope is that they won't. I don't want to dominate your schedule. This is a one and a half credit um, class. And I, I have been a part of one and a half credit classes before where the professor treated them more like four credit classes. And that is not going to be our uh, situation here. Um, these assignments should be things that, especially as graduate students, you're able to pound out pretty quickly, and um, I don't expect that these are going to take you a great deal of time, uh, with the exception of maybe the reading throughout the week, um, from a week-to-week -week basis, day-to-day -day basis. So I think this is going to be pretty manageable for you. A few words about some assignments that are due. Uh, this week, just as a reminder, we've already said it, there is no reading due during week one. Aren't I the greatest professor ever? <laughs> so there's no reading that's due this week. Um, you do have an assignment that is due this week, though, and that is your getting to know you assignment. You can check your syllabus for details on that. I'm not going to outline it here. It's pretty straightforward. Many of you have probably done assignments like this in the past, but that is due on Friday, and that's just an opportunity for us to um, kind of get to know you and uh, a little bit of what your background is and worship styles and as a worshiper and um, your journey a little bit. So 
That is due on Friday. Um, let me say just a quick word about your reading responses and explain those. Remember, those are going to be due on Wednesdays. And the thing with reading responses that is that for each textbook, I'm going to assign two different discussion questions to which you will write a 200 word minimum response. Okay, So roughly just under one page. And by the way, just for clarity's sake, that's 200 words total, not 200 words per discussion question. 200 words for both questions, about 100 words per question, okay? Um, and uh, so I'll be assigning you different discussion questions for each book, and you are just going to respond to those questions and then respond to one another um, as you interact with each other. You will then go on to Moodle, interact with your classmates and myself by reading two other reading reflections from uh, students in the class. Uh, the reading re reflections are due on Wednesdays and the responses are due on Fridays. I know that I'm saying this in a repetitive way, but I'm doing that for a reason, okay? Uh, I want it just kind of ingrained in you and, and kind of flowing through you here. We've got reading reactions that are due Wednesdays and responses that are due on Fridays all throughout the month of January, with the exception of this week, where it's just our getting to know you assignment that's due on Friday. Um, please see the detailed weekly schedule for reading response questions and topics. Online lectures. Um, about once a week, uh, usually on Mondays, this week is a little different, um, usually on Mondays, but no later than Tuesday, I will post a short screencast or presentation lecture that I'd like you to watch and then respond with one question or comment in the online forum um, by Tuesday of that week. So we will get them up there by Mondays. I will have them up by Mondays. Um, and I want you to then respond by Tuesday of that week. Again, see the weekly schedule for the details of what we're going to be covering. In a compacted course like this, it's really difficult to talk about everything regarding worship that, um, that we're going to need to talk about or that you're going to have questions about. So we're going to start off this week with just kind of a welcome and introduction like we're doing right now. Uh, then we're going to talk about scriptural backgrounds, I believe, of worship. Um, after that, we're going to um, get practical and we're going to talk about things like worship planning and environment and elements of worship, the relationship between a senior pastor and a worship leader or worship team, all that. I mean, we're going to incorporate a lot of different uh, things. And then um, what I'm hoping for is that in our fourth week, um, you'll notice that I don't have um, uh, a topic assigned to our lectures. That's because in our fourth week, I would like to just take your questions and do the best I can to answer those from my experience um, and maybe help you do some thinking around that. So um, lectures will be up by Monday, uh, by, uh, and then we will uh, give you the link for those. And then um, by Tuesday, I would like you to respond uh, to the lecture. Okay? So um, what I'm going to do to start off with this uh with this um, presentation is I'm going to both post it on Moodle as a QuickTime file uh, that you could potentially download. I'm also going to put it on YouTube though uh, so that uh, if, if you do have a slow internet connection or, or something like that, um, you know, it's just kind of uh, covering our, ourselves and um, I'll be curious to get your all feedback on which format works the best. Is it best to post it on YouTube or is it best to just put a file on there that you can download and that way you have the lectures uh, wherever you go. So um, so yeah, that's a little bit about our online lectures. So add that to your weekly flow. Okay, Mondays it gets posted. Tuesdays we're responding to the lecture and you can see again the weekly schedule for details. Um, moving on here, uh, all, talking about assignments, Let's talk about your worship service reflection. Um, this is something that a, uh, a number of you have already had questions about. Let me see if I can clarify a couple of things for all of us uh, before I dive into the individual emails, which I will, by the way, and, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, this is an assignment where basically you are to observe a worship service that's hopefully different than your own tradition your own experience. And then I want you to reflect on the experience. I mean, that's pretty much uh, the whole deal. That's the objective of this particular assignment. What I can tell you about this assignment is that uh, 
Uh, gang, I know that this can be problematic for some people. Uh, this assignment has been a part of this class as long as I can remember. Uh, even back when I was at Bethel Seminary, this assignment was, uh, was a part of the class. And I still remember to this day having to um, make special provisions in my schedule to make this work. Um, so that probably tells you the kind of <laughs> traumatic effect it had on me. Um, no, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but um, this is a long-standing assignment, and it's something that is a part of this class, has been for a long time. Um, I do understand completely and totally, as someone who has uh, been someone who's worked professionally in ministry, worked in the church, this can be problematic for some people. Um, maybe you don't work in the church, but you're just in a small town, and there's not a lot of variety out there. Um, I get it that this is a problem for some people. Let me give you a few encouragements as we begin. The first is, as you think about where you're going to do uh, this uh, assignment, what kind of service you're going to attend, I want to encourage you to get creative with your thinking about this. Think about attending a midweek Vespers service or chapel service or a youth group service at a, at a local church. Um, maybe you have services on Sunday and you can't get there on the weekend. Look for something that has a midweek service or a midweek offering. Um, you know, look for a church that has a Saturday night service or even uh, maybe a Catholic church in your small town or in your community that has a Saturday night mass. Many Catholic churches have that. Um, have fun with it. Honestly, make it a, a night with your family or your friends where you go to a service and then go out to dinner together. Or uh, maybe you finish preaching on Sunday and then you head to church that has just a different service time that Sunday. So maybe your service is at 9. Maybe you wrap it up uh, you know, at 10. Go find a church service that is starting at 11 or 11.30, even 12, 12.30. And, uh, and head to that church that has that service at a different time. Here's a, here's a kind of uh, different one. Attend a hospital service. Attend a chapel service. Attend a service in a nursing home. Uh, th there's things you can do that can help you kind of think creatively around completing this assignment in, um, within the parameters of the assignment, okay? Now, if none of these options work for you, if absolutely nothing works and you just are sitting there saying, uh, Seth, and by the way, you can call me Seth, please do. Uh, Seth, none of these work for me. Here's a couple more suggestions. What about an online worship service? And by the way, by online worship service, I don't just mean a podcast of a message. Uh, I mean a online worship service where the whole worship experience is online. There are churches out there that do that. Um, I believe uh, New Spring Church in South Carolina does that. They're one of the best at that that I've seen. They may have changed that recently, but I believe that they do that. Um, I, I believe that Life Church TV might do that. I could be wrong on that one. But in other words, Google it, look it up, do some searching, look for online options. What about something that's pre-recorded? Uh, what about something that's on TV? Um, you know, and by the way, these are legitimate um, forums for doing your uh, assignment on. Why? Because in a digital age, I mean, here we are doing an online uh, class with everybody from Alaska to Pennsylvania to Minnesota to all over the place. The same has happened in worship, and this is one of the dynamics that, um, that we face, and we're going to talk about this uh, in this class, is the fact that um, media, social media, um, and the internet, and living in a digital age has totally changed the face of worship. Um, we now can get worship in an on-demand way, and we're going to talk about, you know, is that a good thing? Is that okay? Is that, is that still worship if I'm watching it on TV? Well, we can talk about that and debate that, but for the sake of this project, um, I will open those up as options to you and say that, listen, there's a million different options. Let's find one that works for you, okay? So I want you to get creative and think outside of the box. If you still have questions and you're still stumped, we'll find something that works for you. But um, boy, I, I tell you, I think you can even order DVDs from a lot of services now, or have someone go and record it for, I mean, there's all kinds of ideas um, for how you can complete this project. Let me say just a word about your textbooks. I tried to pick texts for this class 
um, that have a balance of practical uh, advice and experience in them and theological reflection. And boy, I got to tell you right now, that can be a hard find. It seems like most of the books that are out there about worship, you know, it's funny because they tend to be either written by people who are professors and live life in the world of academia. And so they tend to be sort of either word studies or theoretical studies or theological studies, um, theological histories, all that kind of stuff about worship. Or they tend to be written um, by uh, sometimes worship leaders. Um, and those can get very emotive and sort of laying heavy into the Psalms where we don't get real deep in terms of our knowledge, but it's very emotional and practical and all that kind of stuff. So you can find a lot of stuff like that, but finding something that has a balance of both practical wisdom and theological reflection is hard to find. And I, I think we've done it um, with the three texts that I've assigned you here, but I'll be curious to get your feedback to see if, uh, um, if you think so as well. Um, on the more practical side of the coin, we have the Nancy Beach text, uh, an hour on Sunday mornings. Nancy Beach uh, uh, was a te is a teaching pastor at um, Willow Creek Community Church, and her book is one that is mainly, er it, if it airs on one side of the ball, it airs on the practical side. And I, it, it gets into some of the down and dirty about planning worship and leading worship and mindsets about worship um, that I wish some people had told me before I went out as a 26-year-old senior pastor. So... Um, if that one airs on one side of the ball or the other, it's the practical side. On the other side of the coin um, is the Sherry text. Uh, and that one is a little bit more theoretical, a little bit more theological, uh, but a lot of really helpful tips and practical stuff in there as well. And of the, of the three of them, I would say the one that is probably the closest to a real blend of practical wisdom and theological reflection um, is the one that's pictured here, A Royal Waste of Time by Marva Dawn. Honestly, one of the best books I've ever read on planning worship, leading worship, understanding worship, and just trying to figure, it out, figure out what in the world we're doing here. Um, as we think about, you know, uh, being individuals who are leading people into the presence of God. What does that mean? What does that look like? This is a wonderful book. I, I hope and think that you're really going to enjoy it. Um, the splendor of worshiping God and being the church for the world um, really blends those two nicely. So I'm looking forward to reading those with you. I I'm hoping these texts will be useful for you moving forward as well, that they won't just be things that collect dust on your shelf or that you feel like are, you know, well, there's 20 bucks down the drain. Um, and and I, I really wanted to find some books where there's some depth of thought um, about worship. There's some real reflection going on here and an integration of head and heart, you know, of uh, spirit and truth, we might say. So um, I'm hoping you're going to enjoy these texts. I think they're going to be great conversation starters for us, and um, I'll be curious to get your feedback about them. Uh, just wrapping things up a little bit here uh, for this opening lecture um, that's just been kind of a welcome and an orientation. There are other items in the syllabus uh, that you really should look over policies on late work and things like that. Um, listen, you guys are graduate students. I'm not going to bother reading you uh, what constitutes an A and what constitutes a B. Look it over. Uh, you guys can handle it. Uh, you can go over that on your own. Um, if you have questions about anything, please feel free to email me or call me. Um, the getting to know you assignment, just as a reminder, is due on Friday. So uh, take a look at that in the syllabus and get going on that. Here's a little bit of my contact information. Um, my email is right here, swh43249 uh, at bethel.edu. Uh, <laughs> very memorable email address they gave me, by the way. Um, so, uh, it's like a designation from the Borg or something. But anyway, that's my email address is up there. My phone number is here as well. Um, and I really would prefer email for this class in terms of uh, method of correspondence. 
Um, I think that's going to be our most efficient uh, way to do it. But my phone number is here in case of emergency. If you need to get a hold of me, if something really does come up, absolutely give me a call. Um, I'll be happy to get back to you just as soon as I can. Uh, I do work during the day and, and uh, have a busy life as well. So um, it may be a little bit before I get back to you, but I, I do promise I will get back to you. And then um, just a little bit about um, my email and grading turnaround times. My, my promise to you is that your emails will be responded to you within 48 hours and grading will be done within two weeks uh, of the assignments being done. Usually sooner than that, but um, I, I want to build a little grace in there uh, so that we can uh, get stuff in and done and recorded. Um, and as I said, this is my first class. I'm teaching at Bethel Sem. And as a result, I'm still sort of getting familiar with what kind of tech support and TA support and all that kind of stuff is available to me as well uh, to be operating at the most efficiently, uh, as efficiently as we can here. So um, that's about it for this uh, opening lecture and uh, this sort of welcome and introduction. Um, I really am looking forward to getting to know each of you online. Um, and uh, I really do hope that you're going to enjoy this class. I think we're going to have a fun journey together throughout the month of January, and um, I'm looking forward to taking it with you. So uh, I'll sign off here from St. Paul, Minnesota, and uh, hope you guys have a great, great week. Blessings on you, and uh, know that I'm praying for each one of you by name as we go through it. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.